Jason, it seemed like round one out there was a complete pedal fest. What was your uh, strategy going into round one, knowing going through the lanes that it was becoming a pedal fest? What was your strategy to go A to B? Yeah, the biggest thing is, is uh, we talked about it earlier. I was able to utilize the keypad. I had about six different tune-ups selected, keeping an eye on everybody 60 foot, you know, prior to us, keeping an eye on the track temp, keeping an eye on the rubber on the track. Uh, did my burnout, felt the track out, made some quick adjustments on my timing curve and on my launch strategies, and uh, we went right down and we were low for the round, so hopefully we can keep it up. Fair enough. Uh, strategy going into round two, uh, we'll wait and see who we have for the chip draw, and then we'll kind of wait and see what the conditions are, but uh, we're just basically going to maximize it for the surface. So if it's uh, very similar, we'd expect to run somewhere in the 70 to 71 range. If the track starts getting a little better, we're, we'll, we'll try to be in that you know, 67, 68 range. So um, it's just all about working with the conditions you're dealt with. Right, right. And with Hall Tech being on board and you got that uh, keypad where you can change the tune on the fly, yeah, yeah, I changed it as I was staging. I changed it probably three or four times. I was a little indecisive on a couple different um, strategies, but there were very minor differences. And uh, I talked to Cam over the radio, and we discussed what the track was, and I made my last second adjustment, staged the car, and uh, like I said, both for the round. Couldn't be yep. happy. Yep, went A to B, and that yep. was the objective, and we will see you up there around two. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. So it seems like going into Q2, the track really came around for you guys. Yeah, the track is probably the best track we've seen so far. This weekend or this today? This weekend. Wow. Uh, Backing rubber down, decent amount of glue. Uh, so we went 9.39 and probably could have gone 9.20. Awesome. If it stays that same way, it should go 65 next run. Uh, awesome. Perfect. Well, we'll see you guys back up there in the staging lanes. Thank you. How are you doing today, Jason? Not too bad. Yeah, we uh, we pretty much been a Hall Tech guy from day one. This this particular car, uh, we started out with the 2500T, um, and then we basically moved into the uh, Nexus R5. Uh, we pretty much use it to control every single component on the car. We don't we we have a race pack in the car still because it was there when we built it, but we don't. Nothing's plugged into it at this point. Everything currently runs through the Hall Tech. Uh, we control shock travel sensors, transmission, parachute, um, obviously all of the torque management features that, that it has to offer, and it's all done in one one ECU. So um, 
uh, we, can't, we couldn't be happier. Um, we're always continuously contributing to the development of the product to make yeah. it better every day. And uh, uh, it only gets better from here on out. So I've seen Haltech being used on Pro Mods. I've seen Haltech being used on four-cylinder cars. The versatility of it is there's wide range of it. Yeah. So. Yeah, we actually had a uh, we had an instance this weekend when I was trying to make a uh, qualifier, and we had a map sensor go bad, and you know we're trying to rewire it, and we're running out of time, and we were having some issues with some of the connectors, and we're like. You know what? Let's just uh, take the crankcase vacuum, convert that over to the map sensor, change it in the ECU, and we went ahead and made our pass. Wow. So it just has the versatility of re, kind of redefining, you know, whatever wire you want to assign um, to whatever sensor you want to assign it yeah. to. So the flexibility to do that allowed us to get that pass, which was instrumental data to get us qualified in the field. Awesome, awesome. Do you mind showing us where you have the uh, the Nexus R5? Uh, mounted? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so in this car, you can mount them, it's very, very versatile, but in this car, it's mounted over on the passenger uh, door bar area there. Okay. Um, and uh, the switch pads right up here. Um, right now, we pretty much utilize that for our, our first gear timing curve, our launch curve, our engine curve, our drive shaft curve, and also it can controls all of our lockup strategies and dump strategies where we can actually make adjustments like how quickly I want to bring the lockup in depending on track conditions while we're out there. So a lot of times we're communicating on the radio as I'm doing a burnout and when I'm backing up about what the track surface is, what the track temp is, and then I'm actually changing the tune-up. You know, I have six or seven preloaded tune-ups for each different um, option on the car, so my drive shaft, my engine, my launch, my lockup strategies, my dump strategies, all of that stuff is all controlled by that switch panel. Wow. So I can make all of those changes based on the conditions. So it's not uncommon that as I'm staging, I may make some last second decisions okay. as to what I want to do. And you can do that all through the keypad yes. then? Yep. Okay. Yep. That's that's really awesome. A lot yep. of a lot of other companies, you got to pull out a laptop yeah. and upload it, yeah. download it, and right. but you're doing it on the fly through yeah. that keypad. Absolutely, and you can assign those keypads to do anything you want. Okay. So you can assign them to, you know, if you've got a scramble button or you want to put more timing in as you're going down the track, you can just hit a button and change the timing in the tune-up nice. as you're going. Nice. So, um, you know, so that's very nice right now because I'm the tuner and the driver, so it's right. nice for me to have that at my control. If if I have a situation where I have a customer that's actually driving and I'm tuning, you know, I have then I have the capability of I don't necessarily need the switch pad as much because I can do it all wirelessly right. through my laptop while we're standing on the starting line. And, and the Nexus R5, yes. it, it is wireless yes. too, yes, so, so you don't have to run cables. Yeah over the car and into yeah, the car no, and all that no. so you can just yeah. get it wirelessly yeah. off the yeah you never have to hook the cable up to the car if you don't want to nice it's just personal preference nice um, so yeah that's usually if you watch me i'll have my laptop you know all the way up until almost the burnout box so i'm making last second adjustments basically setting up my keypad in the staging lane nice and then once we get into the burnout box and get to that point then i'm making my last second adjustments there because the laptop's no longer in the car awesome awesome so. well we'll be following you along here at the world series of pro mods and we really appreciate your time and we'll see you back up at the starting line thank you much thank you
Jason, real quick, you got a minute. Not, not the way that we wanted to in the in the weekend. No. You kind of you want to go over what happened out there? Um, basically, we just we knew with these tires and the weight of the car, we didn't know how many hits we could get out of them. And I figured in the semifinals we'd probably have to change if we got there. I didn't realize that we probably should have changed them there. Obviously, they just. Uh, um, you know, just because of how heavy the car is and us being first pair, track gets a little more gluey, and it, uh, with the tire pressure that we're running, it just doesn't like it. Um, we, we found that out testing. We didn't know, you know, typically we could get about two more hits out of the tires in, in our, with our testing data, but uh, for whatever reason, I could feel it when I was staging that uh, they, were, they were pretty much gone because yeah. the tire has a different feel as it's rolling. Um, it has kind of a square feel instead of a round feel. Right. And as a result, it just, uh, you know, it didn't make the trip. And, and uh, we kind of almost knew, almost before we let go of the button, that, that was going to potentially happen. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Uh, that's part of, you know, trying to try new things and right. trying to get better at it. And uh, the, the tires was very, very fast for us all week. Um, we just got to get a better understanding of how long we can actually run them before we have to change them. So, um, you know, it's a learning experience and we'll get better and uh, win the next one. And what I've noticed in the racing industry and the parts supply and everything like that, I'm not naming brands or anything like that, but yeah. some of the quality of, I, I wouldn't say quality, but the lifetime span of product has maybe shrunk a little bit, you yeah. know, two to five passes. And yeah, yeah, and sometimes that's true. Um, you know, with different components, things are harder to get. Manufacturers try different suppliers, right. try different material because the stuff's hard to come by. Yeah. So you run into that in the racing industry for sure. I don't, I don't know that that's the case yet. I just think we're new to to the tire that we're running right now. Yeah. Um, and uh, we learn a lot of good things. You know, with the tire, um, we just have to continue to build and get better. Right. And just learn from it moving forward. So, um, you know, it got us this time, but I mean, you know, we're not disappointed. Um, no, you guys ran you know, a hell we, of a weekend. We ran good. We had a car that was capable of winning this weekend. We know that. Um, it sucks not to get the money, but it was uh, a very good showing for the Coast Pack and Lard Machine this weekend. And, uh, you know, like I said, I, I hate losing, but at the end of the day, we put on a good showing and uh, we'll get better from it. There you go. What's the next stop on the circuit? Uh, we're actually going to be in Alabama racing on a radio again in a couple weeks. Okay. So we got to do the old transformer thing and switch the whole car back over and get back at it in a different trim. There you go. Well, we shall see you later in, in the year and thank you for your time this weekend. Thank you very much. Uh huh.